All right, hello, welcome to the first screencast on Calculus 12. I'm Ms. Batia, and these screencasts are for the students at Elphinstone Secondary who are taking Calculus 12 with me. Uh, the textbook we're using is Calculus, a first course, and it looks a lot like this. Now, most of the homework will be from this textbook, unless I give some extra handouts or things like that. But uh, for this screencast, the homework is from this calculus textbook. Now, the first one's a big, uh, quick introduction, um, answering the question, what is calculus? And then we're going to jump right into the first unit on linear functions and the tangent problem. Now, what is calculus? The big question. Um, to put it in a few sentences, calculus is an analytical branch of mathematics. It's very practical. It's used um, in engineering, it's used in construction, it's used in medicine, it's used in business, and uh, so it uses a lot of analytical techniques. It's very practical in that sense. Uh, to put it in a few words, calculus describes the relationship between two variables that change relative to each other. Now the key being relative to each other. As one changes, the other also changes. And this is what makes calculus a little bit interesting and a little bit more complicated. So an example of this would be speed. Now, speed uses two variables. We have distance and we have time. Distance, as we increase in distance, time has passed. And as time passes, distance is increased from our starting point. Now, if we put this in units, we have our distance, kilometers over our time hours so kilometers per hour is usually um, a very good a very general uh, units for measuring speed so for example say we're traveling at three kilometers per hour we're going pretty slow maybe on a bike or walking or so so if we were to put this on a table time and distance will give time the variable x and distance our variable y and speed you would think would be y over x but in fact, it's actually measuring the change in y over the change in x. So as our distance increases, a certain amount of time has passed. And in calculus, we use the notation delta. So delta y over delta x. And delta is a Greek, word, Greek letter representing change in. Now, if we have a certain number of hours pass, one, two, three hours, we can immediately measure the distance that we have traveled in that time because we know our speed. And if, we, if I tell you that after 24 hours, how far am I, you can easily calculate this given our speed. Now, speed is a calculus uh, phenomenon. So if we didn't know speed, if I just told you after 24 hours, tell me where I am, and you didn't know my speed, you wouldn't be able to calculate the distance. So calculus is something that comes up a lot in everyday life. So let's graph this. If we were to visualize this on a graph, we have distance versus time. After one hour, we have traveled three kilometers. After two, six, three, four, etc. So you'll notice we have a linear relationship here. We have a linear graph, and if we were to calculate the slope of this graph, a slope being our rise or our change in y over our run or our change in x. And from what we knew before, we know that change in y is delta y over the change in x, which is delta x. And numerically on our graph, we have 3, our first y over minus our first x over the distance over our change in x and we get three kilometers per hour so our speed so from our linear graph our graph of distance versus time we found the slope to be delta y over delta x or our speed now delta y over delta x is also known as the derivative in calculus we'll learn a little bit more about what the derivative means but this is very um, one of the first steps in calculus. Now in our graph we found this to be our speed. This is really easy when our relationship is linear. We have a linear graph, 
it's very easy to calculate the slope. But what happens with nonlinear graphs? How do we calculate the slope or the derivative of a curved graph? Now this is where calculus helps us out. So this takes us to the tangent problem and the tangent problem refers to one of the problems that calculus helps us overcome. So this jumps uh, right into our first unit on linear graphs and the tangent problem. So we learned that the slope of a graph is the derivative of the function. It's easy to calculate the slope of a linear graph. However, in a curved graph, what we do is we find the slope of the tangent lines along the, graph, along the curve. Now, what's a tangent line? A tangent line is a line that intersects the curve at one point only. Now, let's see what this looks like. So we have our curve. We have our simple parabola, y equals x squared. And if I were to draw tangent lines along our curve, we would have our first tangent line intersecting one point. And if we move up the curve, we can draw another tangent line intersecting another point along our curve and then another tangent line. So one thing you'll notice about our tangent lines is they're constantly moving. They're constantly changing in slope. And if we were to draw a tangent line along every single point along our curve, we would have different slopes for every single point. Now that's another problem that calculus helps us overcome. But let's jump back to our original tangent line. So we have our one tangent line intersecting one point. We'll call this point P. Point P will be 1, 1 on our parabola. And we need to find the slope of this. How do we find the slope of a line with only one known point? Something about one point, uh, a line that only intersects one point is we can draw it an infinite number of ways. We can have it spin around our point at many different methods, at many different slopes. So in order to overcome that, we have to calculate, in order to calculate the slope, we must know at least two points. So let's redraw our original tangent line. What we'll get is we'll get a line that intersects our original point and it'll intersect another point somewhere along our curve. Now, now we can calculate the slope of this line. So we have two points. We have our original point P, 1, 1, and then we chose another point Q, X, Y, any point that we happen to choose. Since we know the equation of our parabola, Y equals X squared, we can find that our other point is actually X, X squared. So we've got two points. Now let's calculate the slope of our secant line. So our secant line being the line that intersects two points along our curve. Our tangent line only intersected one point. So the slope of our secant line is going to be delta y over delta x, or 1 minus x squared. So 1, our first y minus our second y, over our first x minus our second x, which we have here. Great, we've calculated the slope. However, we want to find the slope of our tangent line. So that's what calculus, that's what we really want. We don't, our secant line is helping us get there, but that's not what we actually want. So using our secant line information, we can calculate our um, tangent line. So what we must do is we make our secant line very, very, very close to the real tangent line. So here's our original tangent line. Now I'll choose a secant line that intersects two points along the curve that's super close to the slope of our tangent line. So we have our original point P, P, uh, 1, 1, and then we'll choose another point somewhere up the curve a little bit. So we have our original point P, and then we have Q, which is X, X squared, whatever that happens to be. So what we need to do is we need to choose a point where we're super close to our original point P, 1, 1. So we'll choose, we'll choose the point right next to it. So we'll choose where X equals 1.1. And since we know that X is, since we know that Y is X squared, we find that Y is 1.21. So our two points become 
our original point, P11, and then our second point, 1.1 and 1.21. Now we can calculate the slope. So delta y over delta x, our first x minus our first y minus our second y over our first x minus our second x, and we get 2.1. This tells us that the slope of our tangent line is close to the slope of our secant line at 2.1. What if we get closer? We'll choose an even closer point. We'll choose where x equals 0 0.01, where n y will equal 1.0201. If we calculate the slope of this, we get 2.01. So our even closer secant line point gives us a slope of 2.01. What if we move even closer? If we move even closer, we have our point 1.001 and our y 1.002001. This gives us a slope of 2.001, progressively closer and closer to 2. We could keep getting closer and closer and closer to our actual tangent line. This would take a lot of calculations. However, Calculus does this. This is what calculus does for us. So calculus overcomes the tangent problem, so we're able to determine the slope of nonlinear functions. We'll get a little bit more into this. But now you should be able to complete um, 1 to 6, 7, 8, 10, and 11. These problems are page 9 of 10 of calculus, a first course, and then our next screencast will jump into 1.2 on limits and tie it all together. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you again in the next screencast.